We all watch movies about things that do seem so futuristic. So far away in the future. All science fiction. It's never gonna actually happen, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that they will happen. What does Avatar, Star Wars, and the Terminator franchise all have in common? Bioengineering. Imagine a technologically modified human being with the capability to fly. Or how about eight multifunctional limbs so you can do more at the same time? Imagine a completely handicapped girl modified through technology so that now she can not only walk and talk, but also listen and see. No need to travel for meetings. Virtual meetings will be introduced, where each participant can modify their environment to his or her liking. I can participate in a mind conference strolling around Mars, while you lie down in the comfort of your pajamas imagining you're in a yacht. And all this communication is no longer going to happen through cell phones, iPads, and computers. No. All this communication is going to happen through little ID chips connected right to the neurons of the modified human being. Bioengineering is a term that fills all of us with hope, while at the same time fills us with the fear of the unknown. Because the influence of technology will no longer just be around us, but it will actually be inside of us. When I say bioengineering, I refer to the fusion of organic and mechanical material in a human being in order to replace lost body parts or improve ones that already exist. Genetics, stem cell technology, prosthetic scientists, and communication systems are all coming together to make this dream a quick reality. Researchers in Queensland recently replicated the kidney. They did this through stem cells. This is a major breakthrough in bioengineering as it provides scientists a real step forward in replicating and manufacturing major organs in a lab, thus creating a method to fight major diseases. With progress in science and man's zeal to one day control his own destiny, today is not far when bioengineering will provide a real means to control and manage health, life expectations, and the environment he or she lives in. He can choose how he will live and when he will die. Progressive technology will one day lead man to virtually replace all his body organs with electrically controlled prosthetic body parts, thus creating a human who could potentially live forever in any kind of environment. Such a technology would require huge amounts of energy, but this won't be of the conventional sort. We won't depend on oxygen and food, but instead we will look at new energy sources, such as solar energy or nuclear energy. Let's talk about how this is all possible and the advances made in the last, say, 20 years. Long John Silver is a fictional pirate with a wooden leg, and in a pure technical sense, this is an early form of prosthetics. Prosthetics is, is the science of replacing lost body parts. In modern day prosthetics, lost limbs can be replaced with electronic counterparts that provide nearly the same functionality, if not better. Thus far, bioengineers have been restricted by necessity, but nowadays they look to a bigger idea. What would it be like to not just replace body parts, but make them better looking, more functional, and longer lasting than the originals? And that's how we reach all these ideas that I've been talking about. In the future, bioengineers won't be motivated by necessity, but instead by fashion and advanced needs beyond the ordinary. So what does such a future hold for us prosthetic human beings? The first thing that comes to mind is concrete space. Our knowledge of space continues to be fairly basic, but in an environment where man can live forever, space will open up infinite possibilities. We, the mankind, will no longer be limited by age. One, two, five, 10, 20, 30, 40 light years, they'd just be numbers. Put your life-saving batteries in sleep mode and cover the distance and as many man years as it might take you. Bioengineering would open up the final frontier in a manner not thought possible today. And of course, we wouldn't need to worry about the carbon in the air anymore, as you wouldn't need to breathe in oxygen, as organic life forms must. Another major benefit of bioengineering is the blessing of long life and the thought of immortality. No need in such a future to lose a Steve Jobs or an Einstein or a Newton, no. Such visionaries would be kept alive to help progress science. How is it possible? The technology is transfusion. Brain transfusion in the future will allow scientists to clone the brain and the sense of being into a microcomputer, who will then act, recall, and behave just as the original being. The next step towards this immortality is to disintegrate the organic body and let the prosthetic one take over. So what are the challenges that such immortality faces? Well, there are many. 
Re human brain research, which is critical for bioengineering, is extremely limited. And in most countries, doctors and research surgeons cannot access a life brain. Human rights organizations blow up any such uh, breach to such proportion that whatever little work is being done is stopped. And we need this to change. We need policies that permit progression. Other problems that bioengineers face are of the social and ethical sorts. The most zealous of us would say, bioengineering is trying to play God. I disagree. Bioengineering is no more trying to play God than doctors that save your life or help in giving birth, or surgeons that mend your body. It's the future, and it's certainly life-changing. In a way, the term life-changing has never been used before. But where there are challenges, there's also hope. Hope for a longer life and better future. Ladies and gentlemen, the next frontier, bioengineering, the real light at the end of life. Thank you.